loyalty and love. I ride with the homie to get buzzed. I ride, I ride with the homie to get plugged. Yeah. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is a special edition. The Lot's got a podcast now. It's called the Living Off Experience Podcast, man. This is a special edition. I'm moderating today. I'm Rob Markman. If y'all ain't come to see me, we're going to have this conversation. Because when you talk about LOX, man, you talk about love, you talk about loyalty, you talk right. about longevity, all right? And we got some guests. Of course, we have the Lot's. We have Styles P. We have Sheik Looch. We have Jada what up, Kiss. What up? And then we have extended friends, family, and legends of this hip-hop shit. Memphis Bleak, Absolutely. Bad also here with us. Yes, sir. What up, y'all? What, what, what up? You already, what, what up? Love this love, family. So love, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. So, I, you know, we just wanted to tackle this this, this, this topic today, and, and this is going to be a free-for-all about loyalty in the game. And I, I, I don't think there, there is anybody that exemplifies that better that you five individuals, and, and really, that's just not lip service. Like, it, you could check the track record. Um, Absolutely. Does, in 2020, you all got your start in the 90s, man. The game was different. The morals was different. The values was different, I assume. In this day and age, with the way the business and the game is, can loyalty still exist? Is this, is this still a thing that, that we can count on in hip-hop and for this new generation? It can, it can, but it's hard because these little niggas don't know each other, for real. You get what I'm saying? They kind of just met each other, like, some way, somehow, through some kind of management or something. They don't have no real history. You know what I mean? And that, that matters, like, when I could tell you something yeah. about a person. You know? Exactly. And a lot of these dudes is loyal to the dollar. Absolutely. They ain't loyal to a person. They loyal to the dollar. Joe, you've been on both sides, Joe, as, think, as <clears throat> an executive I, and as I, an artist. I think, it, I think loyalty is, is based on the individual. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, like, you got a guy that a rat, he'll tell. No matter what excuses or what circumstances, <clears throat> told, it don't matter. Then you got some guys who never did a crime in their life that are taking and go to jail because they just won't tell. So their family told them, hey, we don't tell. So with loyalty, I've noticed that you either loyal or you're not. That's and, a fact. And so I guess it could work today. If the young kids, if that particular person was raised by somebody who taught them true loyalty. You know, I got, I got, I got a question for y'all. This, this is more directed towards the LOX, right? But as hip-hop fans, we can all acknowledge that. As a fan, sometimes the most heartbreaking thing to me is to see a group break up or go through it in public. Like I, I know how we all felt when we seen Eric and Parrish, EPMD, go through their thing. Right? Word. Word. You, see, you see the Fugees. <clears throat> break up, man, or you see Q-Tip and Fife Dog go through it, and it's like, damn, we grew up, like, y'all was superheroes to us. We thought that bond was really unbreakable. The fact is that they human. LOX is human, too, but the thing I appreciate about y'all, and I'm sure y'all went to y'all disagreements internally, we've never seen a blocks break up. We've never seen uh -huh. an internal beef. We've seen y'all together in unison and working as one, what do y'all attribute that to? Because it's really special and it's rare to go 20 years and not see the hip -hop. Absolutely. But I, yo, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I think we attribute it to, to, to all the other groups. We, we made an oath and a pact and a bond before we started that we would never let none of the, the business or, you know, executives or none of the industry, industry things you know, break us up or get between us. And just seeing some of the stuff that the other groups go through, we use that as motivation to never do none of that kind of dumb shit. Absolutely. And yo, yo, Kiss, and then, and then, but even back then, man, it's like when they broke up, it was a little different. Right now, everybody's social media break up. Like, yeah, what the fuck? They put it all on social media. The nigga in the next cubicle, go talk to him. Why the fuck you texting him? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you know where he at. You yeah. sending emails and shit. Dude, he, he right over down the block. You can all, you know, you know where you live. That's how you break up with your wife on on Twitter now. <laughs> You're like, yo, honey, it's quits. Yeah, this shit yeah. crazy, man. The social media game is out of control. Like, like niggas break up on social media. Absolutely. You know? Word. That shit crazy. I like to contribute it to what both my partners, your brothers just said. Um, it's who you fucking with and what you stand for. Like, you know what I mean? And what kind of cold you got. It's like what everybody said. Memph too, like. Some niggas value the dollar over their family. Like, you know what I mean? And like Lou said, some niggas don't got no history. So if they, you don't really know somebody, you don't really give a fuck about them. These guys know my good parts, bad parts, in between parts. Like, you know what I'm saying? They'll call me, tell me, oh, that's fucking stupid. Or oh, that's cool. That's brotherhood. 
So that always should come before money do. But a lot of Definitely. niggas don't do that, and that's what break up their group. They let people Definitely. get in between their shit and the money get in between their shit. Like, if one of them two is doing better than me, like, every day I be on the street, a nigga walk up to me, yo, P, what up? I fuck with you. I love Kiss, though. Yo, P, what up? I fuck with you. I love Sheik, though. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? I love that nigga too, I'ma tell him. Good looking. Like, I ain't gonna get mad and look for that nigga to love me more, but like, you right. know what I mean? Absolutely. You, you love one yeah. of us, you love all of us. One win is a win for everybody. That's a fact. And plus, it's a lot of niggas, even if you don't know somebody, because like, you, you gotta take somebody like Emery. We ain't grow up with E, and E one of the most loyal dudes in our entire whole, fa our whole crew, you know what I'm saying? And he the big yeah. homie in the, in the crew. Mm -hmm. And like, with state property too, I ain't grow up with none of them but right. they still my fam to this day. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, like you said, it goes back to the individual because there's certain niggas that you just can't fuck with. You know, no matter how bad you want to, you cool, but you know, you know, they, they, they motives. You just like, nah, I'm gonna stay away. So loyalty is, is something hard. It's very, it's very rare. It's easy to say you loyal, but as soon as something pop off, Absolutely. you see. You, you, you know what I mean? You need a something to happen. get a better business. Yeah. You take a and nigga, you heat him up. And all of a sudden, he making a couple of dollars. He want to act like it's a better situation over there. Over here, yeah. yeah. Like, you ain't have four chicken wings and french fries, nigga. I'm <laughs> feeding you. I'm good now. Exactly. All of a sudden, it's a better. The grass is green all over there. Are you serious, <laughs> Pete? That's no, a bro. fact. That, that happens every day. And, 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 like, it goes back to the shit that, that the big homie said one time on his record. He was like, you never know who your true friends are until you both have you money. Need them. Yeah, that's one of the biggest Jay-Z lines ever. You know what I'm you. saying? Because when you got money, nigga gonna stay there because he needs you. That's the best like, of both so worlds. Really, that, that's right. You don't know who your, who your best true of friends worlds. are until y'all both yo, have you money. You never know. If we the breadwinners, <laughs> we the breadwinners, unfortunately, we all like to feel the love, but... You never know if somebody needs something from you, if they really, really love you or they with you one million percent. And that's a sad part of the, not just rap game, it's just a sad part of life. Right. Because right. there's a reason why people who got a lot of money got more friends and everybody's happier. And if it's their birthday, right. everybody's there and this and that. And if you got a broke dude who really is the coolest nigga in the world, Niggas ain't really trying to rush to his birthday party or whatever the case may be. <laughs> Shit crazy, I mean. Yeah, that, that's, that's real, though. though. That's I mean, real. But, but Kit, too, and, you know, Lodge dropped a song called Loyalty and Love to kind of set off this, this album run. And, and y'all all three dealt with that individually in y'all verses about just the, even the people in y'all crew that's around because they might want tickets or they might want to get backstage. But if, it, if it's just a regular low-key day when there's nothing going on, Who's really calling on y'all to check on y'all mental health or see if y'all family okay when the tour is not in town right. or when or when or bleak or when it's not a whole concert that everybody wants tickets to? Like, who's really checking for you then? How do y'all suss you, out who to deal with? Just maybe in y'all crew or maybe people that you. There's a selected with? few. I mean, Bro, you, know, you can it count ain't, on it one ain't, hand. That ain't even Chinese arithmetic. You know what I mean? The the, the ones that's sincere. Is the ones that's there and the ones that's not is the ones, you know. The crazy shit with me, it ain't even my, besides Kiss and Styles and them, man, it, it's my aunts and them. It ain't even my homies. <laughs> my fucking aunts and them scared to put my ass. <laughs> oh my God. I can't that's fuck with you, man. Day. I can't <laughs> fuck with you, man. Yo, I just spoke to you, man. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Yo. I, I want to get, I want to get to you because when Rockefeller split, that was probably one of the biggest splits. Again, when you're talking from a hip hop perspective of everybody just on the outside watching like, oh shit, the dynasty. Um, and some people had to pick a side. Like, we know where your loyalties lie with your big homie with Ho, but you never- yeah, That was never a question. But you never jumped out the window even. Let's say when Him and Beans was having an altercation. Like, you keep the shit so clear about where you are and who you are and what your loyalties are. And it never gets disrespectful with you. Like, I've always respected that about you. I appreciate that. And I, I, I feel like I never <laughs> jump out the window with anybody I once called my brother, no matter how bad the fallout is. It's people that, that never been famous, that did dirt to me that I once loved you. I'd rather just not fuck with you than bury you. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't want to kick dirt on you or bury you. Like, I'd rather just not fuck with you than shit on you. It's, it, it, and that's always been my motto. It's not something that just happened with the Rockefeller breakup, because trust me, I ain't want that to happen. That shit fucked up everything. <laughs> <laughs> it blew the car to up on niggas, man. You kidding me? <laughs> but <laughs> like Beans, that's my brother. When him and Jay had the fallout, of course, you know, I, I'm dying to say something, but it's not for the media. It's like what Style said. It's not. It's not for the internet. It's not for me to run the. You know what I mean? This blog of Vlad or this dude to give the yep. interview and be like, yeah, Beans shouldn't have did this. I hollered at that man direct with all of them. You know, PD had a little something to say. <laughs> All of us had a had a one on one. Me, Petey, the Gunners, uh, Freeway. Only person I never seen that have a one on one is is Dame. Right. And as you see, I would never, I don't never shit on Dame. Dame is the big homie. He, I, I, I'm thankful for where I'm at in my life because of the men. Between Bigs, Jay, and Dame, I wouldn't be the man I am today without them three men in my life. Mm. It's always been my rules, even for the streets before rap, to never bite the hand that feeds you. When anybody make an investment in me and give me a glass of milk, you know, I take that mm -hmm. to the grave with me. If somebody helped me feed my family in any way, you know what I'm saying? They always got that bond, that loyalty to where I would never turn my back on them. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, right. and a hundred out of a hundred times somebody ever helped me, I gave it back a hundred times more somehow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so right. a motherfucker might be on his feet and do something for me and then come back 10 years later and be like, yo, Joe, I'm fucked up. I go in the bag and I give him 100 times more he ever gave me. And that's the type of shit that we really respect from the locks when we see you guys stay together no matter what. And yeah. the fans, you know, when we, when we grew up, when we came in this game, you couldn't really smile. You know, every bitch you had an ice grill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nah, real talk. Right. You couldn't right. could be on your health shit. You couldn't be on your health shit. Baby shit. Nah, you had to have an ice grill. Uh, you had to went to jail, got shot. All type yeah. of bullshit. And, right. and we never realized that the answer was in front of the people anyway. And DJ Khaled that made a hundred million dollars out of love. We yeah. didn't know that that was actually more powerful than the ice grills and all that shit we was doing. Mm. So we're like the locks. We don't talk about it, but the streets really, really love them and respect them because they stay together. Yes, sir. And they show brotherhood. And then a lot of people, believe it or not, we think people want to know more. Uh, for the moment, it might be cool. Oh, such and such an arguing. They broke up. Yo, this hype is all over. It went viral. But that's just momentarily. But the love and the loyalty, that shit lasts a long time. And just to tap on what you talk about, Joe, with the locks, man, I'm going to be all the way 100. I will never forget the first fucking clue tape I got when niggas said, this is B.I.G. new crew. I was sitting in the crib <laughs> like, oh, I need 10 dictionaries and 10 more pads because these three niggas is tonight. <laughs> Fucking kidding me? Where Biggie felt these niggas at? I thought that nigga made y'all niggas in the lab or something. Like, these niggas can't be mine. And then when I seen y'all, was we was the same age. Yeah. Hell yeah, they made these niggas in the lab. <laughs> What's up? Thank you, bro. Well, Yo, I'm going to tell you Love, something. Baby. Let me tell you something. When that Memphis Bleak was featured on that Jay Z, oh, we God. thought God was coming. We was listening <laughs> to that shit a hundred times, like, oh my God! Oh, Wait, on a ten speed weed. I remember when I first when I first met you, Joe. I told you my first joint from you was you got a flow, Joe. You talk about Absolutely. the ice grill, yeah? They could thought you was gonna come through video music box and crack you. <laughs> <laughs> Word. That shit was my shit, my dad. I've been fucking with y'all yeah, since yeah. since the beginning of time. And just That's to tough. be on my favorite album from you, Joe, to this day, Don Cartagena, my G. Oh, That's my that favorite is... album to this day from you, my dad. I rock that shit front mm -hmm. to back. Right. That's all. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I gotta go with Jealous One's Envy on that oh, one. With, with Jose. That, that was fire too. Yeah. Man. Like Joe, you know, one one of the dope things about Joe. And when we talk about loyalty, you also had the album called Loyalty. But your career started one of the biggest in the game, like like hits in every era since you started. 
You know what I'm saying? Word. There's a Fat Joe smash. Word. But but Word. your shit started. I don't know if a lot of people know with Diamond D doing doing ad libs. Y'all the Diamond, Diamond D's <laughs> jump blunts and hip hop <laughs> showbiz and AG. Yeah. yeah. One of the fly shits to me, Joe, is, is knowing where you started with Diamond D and you obviously became the Dawn. Diamond D dropped an album last year called the Dime Piece, yeah. and Fat Joe was on it. Like, oh, yeah. You know. I spoke to him yesterday. Um, similar to the lots, uh, DITC uh, as a whole, commercially, doesn't have like the success of the locks, right? But similar to them, we never broke up. I never had an argument with somebody and digging in the crates. That's to right. this day, they call, we pick up. What you need? Boom. What you want me to do? Yeah. What, you, you know, and then when we, when we sit down, like we put out a project, maybe like when All The Way Up was number one, we put out a digging in the crates album. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And when I sit with them, you know, Lord Finesse is the boss. That's my big bro. Yeah, so, big on yeah. So it's like, even Fat Joe, niggas know Fat Joe got the fucking half a million dollar car outside, he's number one. But when we sit down, it ain't changed since 92 and 93. Finesse is the boss. So we listen to him. All right, Ness, how you want to do this? All right, cool, cool, cool. You lead the way. You know what I'm saying? My daughter's right. here. She 14, I tell her all the time, Lord Finesse the boss. And that crew, <laughs> you know, he's yeah. he the method man of the crew. We, we listen up. to him. Simple That's as that. What's up. That's what's up. Lord Finesse was super nice, too. Hell yeah. Facts. Hell he, yeah. Had the, he had the punchlines early. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Yeah, 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 I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah, him and yeah, Grand Pooba had the punchlines early. Early. Facts. Slow, slow, master with it. Joe, Joe, I'm going to start with Joe with this, but everybody here has had experience raising up new artists, right? Putting new artists on, building new artists. And it's worked to varying degrees of success, and it's all been documented. Um, Joe, with Terror Squad, that whole thing that you talk about it, when you were DITC, giving it up to Law Finesse, Law Finesse is the leader. How do you instill that with, with, with TS when, when, you know, TS was really rocking as a group and a hip hop group, and um, just the different artists you bring into the game? I see right now you're running with UFO Feed and a couple of other artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, how does that work with artists that you bring up, and, and how do you instill those values within them, too? And I don't know. It don't work all the time. But the thing about Pun, let's just go there, because Pun is the franchise, the Jerry West, the Terror Squad. The day I met Pun and he rapped for me, he blew my mind and I put him in the car. So I've always been an entrepreneur since I was 14. I've been living in the streets hustling, you know, so I came in the game wanting to be a businessman. And then I watched what Puff did with Biggie. So when I met Pun, I immediately said, yo, this could be the Spanish Biggie. Like, this nigga so nice lyrically, but if we give him the right beats, we could turn him literally into the Spanish Biggie. And the good thing about Pun, and I'm not just saying this because he died, Pun was loyal to the core. So from the first conversation I ever had with Pun, Similar to like the locks are saying, we sat in the car, he jumped in the Lexus, and he said, you're going to be my big brother, I'm going to be your little brother, Terror Squad, my crew now, because Terror Squad, before rap, it was the Terror Squad. Right. So he knew that in the Bronx that, you know, these niggas are crazy, they putting in mad work. So he was like a nigga that was loyal and was always looking for the crew to just be there with him and back him up on that strength. And then we made that pact. And i tell you something, man. I never had a situation with Pun that was questioning either his or my loyalty. We always was like, it is what it is between us two. It's 100% loyalty. We together with each other 1 million percent. And then, and then me being loyal to him, if we talking real shit, me being loyal to him, I had to put his mans on him, right? And it wasn't the same as him. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the same as him. And we tried. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really, I lost my record label behind trying to keep it real to, mm. to Pun's Mans. I had a fucking record label. Like, my own Terror Squad Atlantic. With nigga, Atlantic. Half a million overhead a year. Million dollar budgets. So, if we want to say the obvious, the Cuban League, I spent $1.8 million on this nigga's album, bro. 
He yeah. had beef with the Bloods in the Bronx. I bought the nigga a house before I had a house in Jersey. I didn't have a house. Fat Joe was still living on Throg's Neck in fucking the Bronx. And I bought this nigga a house because the Bloods wanted to tear him up. And then when, you know, pun passed, that's where shit was like, you, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, loyal niggas, they're going to be loyal. This loyal niggas, they're going to be disloyal. And it's always going to come come to life. That's right. But, um, that's and, right. And, and this is the only way I can tell you. I tell, me as a person, I was trying to show the example. You know what I mean? Because, you know, even when I was 14, I was hustling around the biggest niggas in the Bronx. Like, I was 14... But I was hanging out with 30 year old niggas. Like, like my game was was old. Like I'm older than I am. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I was hanging out with the older niggas that was kingpins in the Bronx and soaking up all that game. So I was trying to show them, yo, let's do this the right way. Let's, you know what I mean? And then some people listen and some people didn't. You know, for me, it's 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 always been about leading by example, bro. Just trying to show niggas. You know what I mean? How to move. And, and with all of us, like now, the way we moving now is like, we don't like it. When we grew up, we was telling each other, yo, we don't want to be nobody's role model. But we do realize we're people's role model. Mm -hmm. 2020. So we got to move a certain way. That's real. Um, LOX, man, like, and, and Joe, even just for sharing that, right, it's the ups and downs. What, what do you guys learn because obviously LOX is in the forefront still. You guys are still dropping albums. You guys are still active, solo and group albums. But mm -hmm. there have been artists that come up under the locks too. Right? You know, I remember the first one being Jay Hood, and we mm -hmm. saw how that situation went, right. you know, and, and even the back and forth. And now there's a new generation of artists coming up under the locks, whether it be from All Three Y'all Together or, or Kiss Is So Raspy, guys like, like Millie's, you know, guys like Nino Man, guys like Chris Streets, um, Styles, mm -hmm. your son is in the mix now. Like, there's a new generation coming up under the lock. So what do you learn from that first situation with Jay Hood and really trying to give your light to an artist and build him up to where you are, you are now? Because obviously, as executives, there's lessons that you had to learn, right? Facts. Who want to take that? Who, me? I, man, them <laughs> niggas hurt me, man. I, I stay, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you something, man. With me, I stay all the way back. These artists I was fucking with hurt me deep. So now I just tell them, man, whatever I can help at, I'm, I'm down with y'all, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know it's down. Yo, niggas make me nervous. Bro. Yo, crack. You know, all this make me nervous, bro. So I just fall back. But yo, yo let, let me tell, tell you something. Let me tell you something. I can't breathe. Something. I come from a, I come from an era where if you soft, you lost. Right? There's ever you either prey or you predator. That's where I come up from. I come up from an era of a bunch of bad niggas, like. Bad people, and for you to get your money or you to stand out, for you to make a dollar in that era, you had to be put in, in work. There That's right. No innocent That's right. bystanders out there. It was such a bad place to be able to lift myself up and give myself a situation where I can come back and give somebody else some money and take uh -huh. care of them and try to help them get rich. It hurt me more than bullets. Hell yeah. When these niggas folded on me. Hell yeah. Me Hell yeah. Bullets, Amen. I'll tell you, let me tell you something. Matt Joe, he does decent with the money. But yes. I would have been a hundred million times, I would have had a hundred million dollars if it wasn't for these niggas' disloyalty. When Remy went on the radio and was talking crazy about me, bro, I wanted to die. I had never felt no mm. shit like this in my life. I felt like a lightning bolt hit me in my heart and it was just digging me out. You know, we had this girl since so she's 15 years old. Like, mm -hmm. she was our sister. We had a pink Benzage. Y'all all know what's up. We had her fly to death. When she did that, it turned me all so bad. Now, Rick Ross, I don't want to use the word begging, but Rick Ross, yo, crack, please put me on and hustling is out. Crack, sign me. Like, I want to run with you, crack. Rick Ross, the nigga you see in the biggest house in the world, really wanted to sign. <laughs> Pit Bull, the same thing. All these artists, I had them right there. I could have signed these niggas and made hundreds of millions of dollars off of them because of the way that the situation happened with the disloyalty between Cuban 
and Remy, yeah. it turned me off so much that I was looking at artists that was gonna yeah. make a hundred million dollars. I was like, yo, you know what? I don't want to sign niggas. Yeah. I'm your friend. I'll point you in the right direction. Uh-huh. Peace uh-huh. to the gods. We brothers. Yeah. 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 You know, Pitbull's demo. I took Pitbull's demo to the record label and told him to sign him. And I ain't make a dollar out of that. And even with like Khaled, I could have signed Khaled forever. He was he, he signed the Terror Squad. I gave him the deal, but I didn't want to fuck up my relationship with him. So I was like, yo, Khaled, this is your own situation. Right. But had that disloyalty not happened, I would have signed Pitbull, Rick Ross, Khaled, and, and cake the fuck off these niggas. Like, <laughs> but that disloyalty turned me off that so be hard. Pumping you up, and bro. I was like, yo, I'm good. Oh, yeah. One thing I learned from the executive side, man, and it's the truth. When the artists win, it's they fault. When they lose, it's your fault. Your Absolutely. fault. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So long as you like when you when you understand that, you 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 know not to invest with your heart. Like, you know what I'm saying? And and all of us did business with our friends, like somebody from our neighborhood that we tried to put on, and of course things turned sour. But I'm talking about from future endeavors, man, all these artists. All we could do is get them the opportunity. It's on them to take the ball and run that, to score yeah. that touchdown. You know what yeah. I mean? We could set up a couple blocks, but we can't run for you. I was gonna say everything is different because one, we everybody that you're speaking on here, Wit had the kick in the door. Like I'm just yeah. telling you, as a member of the locks, when I when I, Luch and Kiss was super professional as kids. Like they went <laughs> fucking hard. Them niggas made songs, hooks, studio time. They was doing independent shit as kids. So when you get in the the position, you want to see somebody with that same work ethic and same drive. Not saying people don't have that, but it's like people don't understand. Like, yo, my nigga, I I sold, we sold crack. We sold dope. We worked Mm -hmm. legal jobs. We went to school. We made our rhymes, figured it out. We did all of that shit. Like, so when somebody comes to you and they got a certain situation that you had to go through, and you trying to tell them the hard way, they may not, they may not just be feeling you. So like that's why mm-hmm. it's hard to do business. Like like Mem said, it's hard to do business with niggas you know. Cause when you telling that nigga nigga, there was times I fucking I barely slept, I barely ate. All I did was take a shower and got back to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that's that nigga because... can't relate. That can't re- That nigga can't relate to you. Yeah. That's because a lot of these niggas watch the end of our chapter. They don't know the mm-hmm. beginning of our book. They, mm-hmm. they, they skip the beginning. Right. So they watch the, in the last chapter. They watching the last scene when niggas riding around in roses. So they think we started that way. They don't yeah. know niggas started in that Honda Accord on that 10 speed for real. When yeah. niggas writing on the 10 speed, that shit was real. Like, that's what I rode to the studio on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, right. you know what I'm saying? These kids yeah. don't know that. These niggas starting off with a Roly. So they think the next stop is the mansion in the G5. Lee, uh, you got you got warehouse, um, you know what I'm saying, which is which is your 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 endeavor where you mm-hmm. sign artists and, and, and put artists on. How how tough is it for you as an executive or, or maybe it's been easy, but to get these artists yeah. to understand the work that they gotta put in, like obviously they see who you connected to, like is 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 it like now I'm bleak the executive now, or people just still seeing you as part of the rock's legacy and, and Maybe a connection it's, to the it's, big homie. It, it's, it's both sides. Because you get certain niggas that come around and they think because I'm not around all the time that I'm not that person I am in the crew. So they think they're going to go hang out with the big homie and be cooler with him than me. I tell them, all right, good luck. Let's mm. see how that work out for you. And then they don't want to listen. The hardest thing I found out dealing with new artists in the label is when you're trying to build a crew of, a, of niggas who don't know each other, like... That thing that we had with, with, with Rockefeller and State Property, like how Joe was talking about with Pun and his crew, the lock tie with mm. G-Dap and everybody, I'm pretty sure none of us really knew all the artists we was working with. Niggas just mm. built camaraderie, made some money, went on tour, and killed it. To try to recreate that in today's era is like nearly impossible. These artists mm. don't even fuck with each other. Yeah. You know how hard yeah. it was to try to get... Like, think about it. I got Manolo and Casanova, and they never made a record. That's impossible. Mm. Well, they're both from Brooklyn. It, 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 tell them again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that, that's impossible to me. It's like, these, these dudes don't want to work. Everybody just want to be the man. It's no more Indians. It's only Chiefs out here. I, I guess with that, like, it's the reality, but 
so I, I guess the question is, right, there's a certain cloth that y'all are cut from. And, and, we, and we went through it with the history. And again, you can read the resumes. Like, we, you're talking to five of the most loyal people in, in this thing that we call hip hop and rap and stemming from the streets. Like, it's just, it's just documented. How do we teach that to the new generation? Or, or is it just lost? Is it like done? Should we just give up? There's never going to be. I, I don't think it's done because, like, um, <laughs> like you say, um, Cracks Young Boy, UFO Thief, his energy is amazing. There's a lot of youth that's going, you know, and new dudes who's going to carry the tradition. It's just about um, not stepping on their toes, respecting what they're doing, but making sure you're pushing the culture at the same time and doing what you're doing. Like, you know what I mean? Exactly. I think us three, I think us three, we beautiful at that. We fuck with it. We see the old heads who came before us, and I, it's like I'm looking at the grandmasters of rap, and I appreciate the shit out of them, bow down. I see the new dudes, they young dudes who ain't got to be on the block doing all, all kind of dumb shit, getting money. I fucking respect it and love it. I just want to play right. my part and just stay doing what I do and not <laughs> fuck with right. you, not be in nobody way. Like, you know what I mean? I think that's what makes us awesome is because we got that loyalty to each other. I already got to deal with two dope ass niggas. Like, you know what I mean? I ain't like, mm -hmm. I got to go in the lab and worry about what they got to say every time and keeping up. I ain't got no time to be fucking <laughs> worrying about <laughs> these other niggas. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to figure out how the fuck to keep up and get in this lab and get on my A game when I get there. So I, I ain't thinking about nobody else like that. But love to everybody. Hope everybody gets some fucking money, get some paper, get some bread, put their block on, put their homies on. Keep it fucking moving. Is it still about, you know, the locks with this new album, man? Style saying we all laugh. But do y'all still, like, feel like the pressure of keeping up with each other? Because y'all both, all three of y'all, I mean. Yeah, I do every time. Yeah, yeah. The pressure of keeping yeah. up with, we keep, we keep up with each other, but not with nobody else. Like, I just want to hear what these two niggas got to say, and then I just, I just feel we're going to murder everything else, man. You get what I'm saying? That's just my mindset. Well, Joe, right. at this point in your career, is it still keeping up? I'm, I'm just looking well, I'm at the best in the game. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> See nobody. That's before, right. Man. That's I right. Ain't they nobody no more. Up. Let me tell you. <laughs> I ain't right. seeing nobody no more. I'm the best in the game, man. I'm pulling right. away, man. This That's shit right. a marathon. I'm pulling away, baby. I'm That's pulling right. away. Fuck that. Absolutely. Fuck that. Fuck that, man. Hey, right. hey, yo, but let me tell you something. This is a question I got. Do you think is our era style of music done? Or do you think in the future, let's just say like Griselda or whatever, are we gonna see a resurgence of the real hip hop we love to make come back and be like the most dominant music or or no? Or it's TJ, Travis, like not as long as they only let one Griselda in every twelve years and fifteen, seventeen years. Right, bro. No, yeah, they let, a, mil okay, they let a million of these other shits in and one Griselda every twenty years, yeah. you're never gonna catch back up. You know what it is? We ain't got no it's fucked up because it's 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 our thing. It's a thing of ours, but we got no control over what nothing radio or fucking video has to do. So it's like we ain't the program directors. Like you know what I mean? And, At the end of the day, me. it's the same five shits all fucking day. And I think I ain't gonna lie. I think I think it's a that era. It might be lost, Joe. Because think about it. When you was in 92 making your music, I was the young nigga still out there listening to learn, uh, the, uh, you know, absorb the OG methods. These young niggas now, they high. They just want to hear some high shit. That's yeah. it. Yeah. They don't want to learn shit. They, they, wanna, they yeah, listen to, like, think, if you play some KRS-One for these niggas now, the teacher, they don't, yeah. they don't even want to hear none of that. They don't nah. want to learn nothing. Niggas just want to yeah. get high. That's it. Yo, kids, I'll be at my son's pep rallies, and my son's 15, 16 now, and um, I'm listening, man. We working too hard. These niggas ain't even thinking about nothing they writing. No. The shit that's coming on is like, no. pep rallies is, I never heard, our shit ain't coming on at these high school games and shit, man. Nah, it is what it is. These kids, <laughs> these kids just want to dance and yeah. get high. That's it, man. Either you gonna have. But do we think? Movie? Do we think this happened? This happened to the, to the KRS, the LL Cool J. Did did, did, it, did it reach a point where they said, "Damn, this nigga Lil Nas nigga is kicking that shit." J Z B. Like, do you think this happened before? Like, hell yeah, yeah. It, was like, yeah. yeah. it happened, hell but yeah. not, but not like that. These niggas, these oh. niggas is whack. 
These other niggas is black as fuck. Like them, 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 them our OGs was proud of us of the shit we were saying. Yeah. Crap, bleak. Yeah, like they was proud. It wasn't to that yeah. level. And, and, and it was to the fact that, like, think about it. Them, the people that came before us, they had to live by a certain guideline. Word. We came and pushed the envelope and told them the yeah. real life, the streets, what we really was going through. Now they just telling you fashion. Word. Yo, the rap game to me is just like one big Rob report. You buy the Word. magazine, that's what everybody talking about. You, you know what it is, though, too? Like, from my perspective and Styles' point, like, we not controlling a lot of the avenues that we need to be controlling. But it's also, as hip-hop got big, I have this theory. The fans now determine if a song is hot by seeing how many plays it got. If you go to Spotify, yeah. you can see how many times something was streamed before you even hear it. Mm. You, you could, if you go on YouTube, you can see how many plays it got before you even hear it. So mm. these fans are making their determination. And what that does is it makes hip-hop the biggest thing in the world. The problem Facts. is, is not everybody listening to hip hop and clicking on those songs are hip hop fans. They don't have the same morals that right. we grew up with. They don't come from the same place. So they're voting and, and raising a lot of shit to the top, mm. but they don't have to live with the consequence. A lot of hip hop fans now driving the music and the culture are just in their hip hop phase. Mm. Right. And in and, three or four and, years, and, they're going to be out of it and be on some other shit. That's the real shit I heard pages. in 10 years. Mm. Nah, and real. to be honest, too, man, <laughs> something I always something I always said, too. Our music ain't dead. Like, our era, you still have artists who talk that shit we talk, who make real hip-hop music. It's the fan that really can't. Remember, when you talk about artists that ran the streets, we had every drug dealer from every corner in every city buying them CDs. Mm -hmm. Once iTunes, Tidal, and all of that shit came out, you took the, the money, you took the CD out of their hand. The average nigga getting money on the block, he don't have a debit card in his phone. Yep. Mm -hmm. So how he getting the music? Facts. You know what I'm saying? So they don't get the music unless they son, daughter, or somebody yeah. come ask for a Christmas gift, or iTunes card, and yep. they hear them playing it. As a parent, you don't know what's new out there unless nah. your kid come through with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You go in if you go in Best Buy, Target, or anything, you coming out of there with a TV, a, a fucking a grill, or yeah. something else before you even get to some music. <laughs> right. Don't even right. sell CDs right. no more. Right. Like, what do you, like, what do you, get, like what, you know what fucked up too? Again, it's the technology. I'm, I'm technology, saying, man. I'm here yeah, on my MacBook. I'm here on my on my MacBook right now. Right. There's no place to put a CD in this motherfucker. And it's yeah. been like that for five, six, but, seven years. But even like as a, I like, think about the nigga who just got a pocket full of money. Where do he go buy music at? Where? He just got oh, cash. He don't have cash. Where? No credit, none of that. Right, right. No, yeah. None of that. He just got a pocket full of money. Yeah. Now they buying $500,000 jeans. They ain't buying mm -hmm. 10 CDs. <laughs> 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 well, hey, but, they just, <laughs> but the same part of that, we ain't have all of that. So everything we did was raw. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you got to think about it. These kids getting on, they saying kids from other countries, Besides the next town over, the next few cities over, they could look and see how people are living anywhere in the world. When we gave what we gave, when 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 it was the rock, they was giving you what was happening yeah, in Brooklyn, yeah, the streets of Brooklyn. Yeah. Crack was giving you what was happening in the, in the BX. We yeah. was giving you what was happening here. We all had similar stories, but we yeah. all sort of had a different slang, a different way of doing things. If I seen a nigga with a certain pair of sneakers, I wasn't running to get the fucking sneakers. I'm running to get the other sneakers. <laughs> One, and then yep. color yeah, he the ain't got. <laughs> I want to be different yeah. from them niggas. That's, that's what right. that's the big difference. So you got New York dudes, all they're gonna use is slang from everywhere else in the world because that's they on the they on the fucking computers with their homies. Right. Yeah. So it's like you it's like a it's like a give and take. It's like the Double edged sword. I'm, I'm thinking the slang. I blame the DJs a little. <laughs> <laughs> Program directors, too. And what happened to hip hop a long time ago uh, when you heard Chuck D, KRS One talking about it? The shit got commercialized, man. And it got mm -hmm. to the point of where the problem is only niggas our age is talking about culture. Mm -hmm. Culture now has the word, the term culture has now become <laughs> like the new Brooklyn. The, the, yeah, like, the new. Gentrified. Yeah. The only niggas who's up here talking about KRS or Big Daddy Kane is, is us. The music industry just said, I don't give a fuck. I mean, look what's happening. Like, I don't want to single people out, but anybody who's getting a lot of play, 
They the hottest ones. It ain't that they paid homage or they came with culture. They did nothing. If he's a gimmick, Little Nas X was the biggest nigga last year, bro. Mm -hmm. This nigga yeah. got a cowboy suit on. Let's just leave that at that, right? <laughs> but they did that. They did that, though, Joe. They did that. <laughs> by banning, stop, by, nah, they yo, did please. that. Remember, yo, listen, my G, remember, anything people can't have, they want. Soon as country music banned that record from their chart, that shit yeah. took off, my G. Mm. But they listen, did that. Yeah, wait, I'm not just saying that. I'm, like, I'm, it's I'm, just, hurt. I'm not gonna act like he wasn't wearing cowboy suits like Kumo D. That shit happened. <laughs> Word up, niggas was Wild Wild West for Kumo. Yo, you ain't lying, but what I'm saying to you is I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to tell you is they going with whatever's hot. If a nigga come out right now and Get in the back, but Bebop becomes number one. When well, they're the new star, they're the new, they never played their dues. They never, Yo. you know, so all that reflection on Spotify and all that shit is they playing whatever's hot. Even if the shit is the, the biggest trash they ever heard in their life, yeah. they playing that shit a hundred million times. Look, come on, man. They let the dude from London, man's not hot getting hot. Rob, you know who I'm talking about. The yeah. nigga who had on the jacket yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, the game, yo, yo, it's over, man. But no, I, I, I think as bleak as shit seems, like, and it's, it's an uphill battle, I do think shit is going to come back because I think people are just going to crave something more. Like, after a while, you're going to need something with, with just – that stick to your ribs a little bit more than, than a lot yeah. of the shit that comes they, and goes. You know, all right. But the audience is going to demand it. The Lock still dropping albums. Fat Joe still dropping right. albums. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what? It's in a good place, though. You got to leave it. You got to understand it's still on a good note. Nobody ever says the best nigga is one of them bubblegum niggas. Nah. Even yeah, if it's no. bubblegum shit. You ask, yo, who's who got the best bars? And this is going to even say Kendrick, Cole. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just about to say. fucking rhymes. Yeah. yeah. Niggas, whether they like that shit or not, that other shit pop. At the end of the day, you ask niggas who the best it. is, they're going to give it up they to one it. of them young niggas who can actually rhyme. Spit. So we ain't fucking that bad. It ain't that yeah. bad. Because as long as we got them fucking kind of niggas and they doing what they do yeah. and the Coles and Definitely. Kendricks and those, yeah. we going to be all right, like. Thousands, these niggas Thank is God high, for man. Cole and Kendrick. These, these, these little niggas is high, though, y'all. You got to remember that. Kiss, these niggas is high. Before, like you said, it was cool to be the hustler. Now it's cool to be the fiend. These motherfuckers yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Jesus That's Christ. A <laughs> That's a fact. They That's high, man. They <laughs> high, but let me, let me tell you something, man. There was exceptional artists that came out and changed the game. And we can run out. We all got our own list. We can say the Jay Z's, the Nas. When you're Illmatic for the first time, you're a reasonable guy. You're a big. You're pun. You're Eminem. You're every. And these people were like exceptional. Like so, when you when you heard it, you was like, Jesus Christ is a new day in rap. But we also I had believe. we had K Seven back then too. Like it was shit out there that wasn't <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? K Seven. I'm done. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's got to be some new young niggas somewhere that's going to come and spit yeah. that shit so legend that everybody going to be like, oh, shit, this nigga. And you know what happens? When one of them come, another one come, another one come. So I got hope. Just you know, send them niggas to warehouse, man. Come, <laughs> come on, Joe, for the warehouse, baby. <laughs> I'm saying, though, too, and when they when they come through and when, when these new rappers emerge that we're talking about, I think they're going to credit the Fat Joes, the right. Bleaks, and the Rockefeller movements, yeah. the Kendricks and Coles, because it might be a little closer to their generation, and the Locks and this new album, Living Off Experience. Like, right. y'all going to drop this, and it's going to inspire somebody, some young kid who's just, like, not into what's going on right now and needs something different. And he might press play on this new Living Off Experience joint, and you don't know what chain of events that's going to set off. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Shit, y'all already dropped projects. I, I fucked with your new project too, Styles. That shit heat, man. Ed Kiss, yeah. you know, come on, man. You dropped Thank some you, shit. As soon as we left yeah. Vegas, man, you gonna do that to me like that? <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. well, Thank you, man. Y'all niggas stay up, man. What we doing, Rob? We, we, you said we ending this or what? Yeah, we gonna sign off. We gonna sign off right there, man. Like, oh, yeah, gentlemen.
Yo, push your immune system. Keep your immune system strong. Keep that immune system boosted, man. Keep the immune system boosted, man. All right, y'all. Y'all stay up, man. Love. Yes, sir. Peace, y'all. All day. Peace.